I want to bring in ABC's Catherine Falders along with attorney Jeff Robbins, the former chief minority counsel at the Senate Permanent Subcommittee on Investigations for more on this. Catherine, we all saw the events of January 6th play out in real time. We also saw video of those events play out during the Trump impeachment hearing. So what challenge will that present to the committee now and what will this new video show that we haven't seen before? Yeah, well, I think we have to keep in mind that there is so much new video, not only from, you heard John's package there, not only from that documentary filmmaker, but also the Capitol Police have turned over more than 14,000 hours of video. Uh, this is what committee aides are see saying is never before seen video. Uh, also, the video elements here, that we know that they've taken depositions from multiple uh, former senior White House officials, administration officials, uh, the former president's own children. Uh, we've previously reported that Don Jr., uh, Ivanka Trump, Jared Kushner have all talked to the committee. We can expect to see some of that, too. Jeff, this isn't a legal proceeding. So what is the committee hoping to accomplish here? Could there be real consequences that come from this? Well, the first thing they're trying to achieve is to somehow grab the attention of the American people, uh, many of whom, as we all know, think this is old news, non-news, fake news, not significant news, and to somehow impress upon a significant percentage of Americans, uh, many of whom are focused on other issues, that this really is an assault on democracy, which is unprecedented. Uh, there are an, a lot of tremendous consequences that may ensue, one of which, of course, are indictments in, uh, from the Justice Department. And no doubt the committee hopes to galvanize support for those. There are obviously the midterms coming up, uh, the all-important midterms, and the committee members naturally hope that uh, what happens in the midterms will reflect the horror that people have about what occurred. Now, Catherine, so far the committee has conducted more than a thousand depositions and interviews, received more than 140,000 documents, uh, but they've also faced legal challenges from witnesses who defied their subpoenas. So how strong is their case at this point? Look, I think it's a combination of both things. They have a strong case, they believe. Aides will say through all the video, but also through uh, these thousands, over a thousand depositions that they have done. They've spoken to high level people uh, in the Trump White House. Now, I think also to remember that they've essentially said that these messages that former Chief of Staff Mark Meadows turned over have essentially served uh, as a roadmap, for example, uh, throughout uh, their investigation. At the same time, they are running into time constraints here. We know that uh, Republicans could take over uh, the House come November. There is a time constraint to get these hearings done and then also uh, submit their final report that they plan to make public in November as well. Now, Jeff, a former Trump chief of staff, Mark Meadows, turned over some 9,000 text messages detailing his conversations with activists, lawmakers, and White House officials. And those have given the committee somewhat of a roadmap for their investigation. So how critical are those messages to these hearings now and potential consequences that could follow? Well, there is a mountain of evidence. There's actually a mountain range of evidence of a concerted effort uh, on the part of those within the White House working with others to try to overturn the election results by one means or another. I mean, look, you have a federal judge, as you know, who has literally ruled that the former president of the United States has likely committed at least two federal crimes. So we're not talking about chopped liver here, and it's gonna to be tough for the GOP to describe this as a nothing burger, but that will be the pitch that will be used. The familiar refrain of uh, nothing here, nothing new, old news, witch hunt, uh, politically motivated and all the rest. Now, Jeff, a federal judge found that Trump more likely than not committed felony obstruction in a case that stemmed from the whole legal strategy surrounding the election and trying to overturn it. So how could that play into this investigation now and any potential charges that could come from it? Well, you're, actually, you're absolutely right. That's exactly what that federal judge found. And notably, that federal judge made that finding on the basis of a tiny fraction of the evidence that the committee has. And so to your point, the committee is likely to have, certainly have, uh, a body of evidence that dwarfs the evidence of, upon which that federal judge made that finding. And the committee hopes, obviously, that the, the, out, the laying out of this evidence, the making of a public record, will cause the public to say, you know what, this is, we know we think uh, we've seen uh, this strip, trip, drip of evidence. We think we know what's occurred, but what's occurred here really is uh, the most egregious internal assault on democracy that we've seen since the Civil War, and therefore the Department of Justice, Congress, uh, the electorate, all 
ought to behave accordingly. All right, Jeff, Catherine Falders, Jeff Robbins, thank you both. And ABC News will carry tonight's hearing live starting at 8 p.m. Eastern. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.